Hi guys, I'm Isleda from the School of Design and Media. Over the years, we receive many, many questions about admission particularly. So we decided to collate all of the questions and the answer in a specific padlet. You can access this information via the link in the description. But I will take some questions today and I will share the answer with you. So I know I always receive a lot of questions about the early admission exercise because it's a very complex exercise. Now, I did record a video uh, for enrollment procedure through early admission exercise. I recommend you watch that because I do answer some of those questions in that video. Uh, as in, the information is all there for you. Of course, a lot of other information is available for you on our Discord server, so feel free to join. Some of the questions are about the dates. When is the date to submit the write-up for EAE? The dates are available on the EAE portal throughout your application period for the early admission exercise. The EAE portal is your best friend. As you go through the exercise, you won't receive communication about the status of your application. In fact, I think you only receive status at the end of the exercise, which is usually around the first week of September. Uh, but along the way, you will receive communication from us. Uh, they will tell you if, for instance, um, you pass the first round of uh, selection. And so you are invited to submit your portfolio and come and take the test with us. And if you pass the test, then you will receive it further communication to let you know that uh, you have to attend an interview with us. Mostly, that's all the communication you get. For scheduling and rescheduling appointment, you will use a form and a sign up genius. Only in case of emergency, you need to change the thing, then you have to contact us and let us know that the dates need to be changed, not the application. The application dates for EAE, those come from MOE. You have that week to apply, Make sure you check. Don't wake up last minute. Uh, some people miss the application date by a few hours because they were applying at midnight and then the portal closed. Don't do that. Please be ready. Be very Kanjong spider about this thing and apply early on so that you can chill after that and then just wait. Now talking about test, they are asking is the test digital or on paper? Currently, it's on paper. Currently, it's on paper. So, uh, and it's in person. So, you come to school and you sit in a hall. You bring your stationery, pencil, uh, pen, no calculators, no phones. You can have your watch to time yourself because the exercises are timed. So, it's a good idea to have something to time yourself to make sure that you finish the test. It's very, very important that you finish the test. So what is on the aptitude test? Every diploma's test is different. Every diploma's paper is different. It's based on, on what they do and what they expect you um, to be able to know. Because the early admission exercise is based on your passion, your aptitude and your attitude. So they expect you to be passionate about the diploma, uh, the subject that you will learn in the diplomas, and um, knowledgeable. Knowledgeable in the industry related to the diploma, right? So if you want to know more or less what could be the criteria, I recommend you read uh, this document that we created is called Portfolio Requirements, which you can find on the MYP website. And I also have a colorful version available for you on this court. And it will list what are they looking for in portfolio, like observational drawing, design, DNT. Every diploma will be looking for different things. So make sure that you know what the diploma wants and prepare for that. How do we submit our portfolio? So as you know, right, the early admissions exercise works like this. You put up the application on the uh, on the EAE portal. You do your 600 characters write-up and one and the 1,000 character write-up. I have a few questions about the write-ups, by the way. But I did mention uh, in the enrollment video um, what, what you need to do and what you need to have. So after that, you do the test and you need a portfolio. Like I say, we help you for the portfolio. Uh, so if you are selected, if you go through the first selection stages, which usually is based on your choices, 
you know you can put up three choices right choices do matter so we tend to call in the first choice applicants and second choice applicants first so if you put us a third especially if the diploma is quite popular chances are that you might not be selected so you need to know that uh, when the diplomas are very popular they fill up very fast with the first choice applicants and so those are the ones that are called first if you pass these selection stages you will receive communication uh, that will ask you to submit a link for your portfolio why do i say link because for the past few years we've been teaching you guys to create websites and to upload your work either on google slides on canva uh, on artstation uh, you name it so that you can send us a link and we can look at your work uh, as well as your test uh, at the same time and that's what the lecturers will use to decide whether or not they want to call you for the interview if you create a website to display your work must you put your name or is it all right if you use a username so that we can use it for something else please put your name and the diploma you're applying for uh, it is going to be extremely difficult for us to figure out who you are on on your application is your actual name as on your IC so let's say that I apply through communication emotion design as data you know with my name and then I send in my portfolio and it says the almighty data store how are they gonna figure out it's me so due to the volume of applications, if we misplace the link for some unfortunate reason, then you basically have no portfolio and you will not be called. So make sure your name is on it as well as the diploma you are applying to. So then we know, oh, this is data and she wants to go to communication and motion design. I'll pass it to the lecturers. Can? Can drawing description be slightly informal? So one of the things that we say in the portfolio requirement video is that your work needs to be clearly cited. Sometimes things get out of hand. All right, you guys like to tell us full stories. Uh, somebody even sent in fun fictions and stuff. Due to the volume, the high volume of applications that we receive, I really do not think that my colleagues have time to read your fun fiction or to read the whole story in your portfolio. So what we mean by clearly cited um, is something about this is an illustration done with watercolor of uh, my neighbor's house uh, and his beautiful dog who is a Pomeranian. Uh, instead of writing the whole thing, just say observational drawing, watercolor on paper, my neighbor's house. Three lines will do. As long as we know the key elements, which is the subject matter, the material you use, and the categories, because you have to park it under some of the categories that we are looking for. Once again, the categories are listed in the portfolio requirement file, which you can find on the MYP website and on Discord. Can I take my previous artwork for observational? Now, I know that some of you especially from ITE, have been doing observational drawings from photos, uh, which is okay. Observational drawings is one of the categories that you will see pop up a lot. Yes, we need to know that you're observant, you understand what you're seeing, uh, you understand perspective, uh, you understand a little bit of anatomy, it's very, very important. And so, uh, if, uh, for instance, you're drawing people, uh, you will see that one of the common comments that you will receive is please draw full figure. We want to see hands, we want to see feet. <laughs> okay, all right. If you don't draw hands and feet, ah, this person doesn't like to draw hands and feet. Doesn't look good. So if you're drawing an environment, which will, will ask you, uh, draw something from life. All of your observational drawing are always better if you draw from life. Why? When you draw from photo, Usually a photo has a lens effect on it, which will deform the perspective or it will deform the object. Now you don't know why the thing is deformed. You just draw it. But to us, it will look like a deformed drawing. And then we know, oh, okay, oh, this one is drawn from 
photo. Now there is a very big difference between drawing from a 2D surface and drawing from life. Life is three-dimensional. So can you see volumes? We want to see that. Can you see the volumes? Do we understand the volumes? Okay. My recommendation is, yes, you can use your previous drawings. We had a few still life drawings from my T students. They are quite acceptable. But if you cannot, a personal sketch of people in the MRT, your mom watching Korean drama on TV, your dog playing with your shoes, uh, that would be quite lovely because the best thing about observational drawings is that we get to see the world through your eyes. How are the interviews like? So in the past uh, few years, due, uh, we, we used Zoom due to the pandemic, and um, but the structure is always the same. So whether we do it via Zoom or we do it face to face, uh, you will see two lecturers interviewing one student. That's not to intimidate you. It's to make sure that the student is evaluated in fairness. Okay, because these two lecturers eventually will discuss about you and will need to agree do you feel the same way. So it is just for us to make sure that you are evaluated fairly so that we have more than one person's opinion about you. You see? And that's very, very important. Do we submit our portfolio at the same time as our write-up? No. The write-up is an MOE thingy. You go to their portal, you put the three choices, you put the write-ups, you must make sure that every write-up for the 600 characters write-up is diploma-specific, you don't copy and paste, you have to know the difference between the different diplomas, and the different polis who offer the same courses. We are different. There is a reason why there are so many. It's not because we all teach the same stuff, all right? Now, the 1000 character right up instead is about you, it's about flexing. I have a diploma in piano. I participated in competition. I'm a sporty person. I help my grandma with my groceries. All sort of accomplishment that let us know a little bit about your personality. What kind of human being are you? That's all we want to know. Now, the portfolio, like I said, comes afterwards. If you pass this first selection, if you pass this first selection, and then you're invited for the test, then you receive the communication. Hey, can you send out your links? So uh, you may have more than one. Uh, so now they're asking, is it okay to submit the same portfolio for two different diplomas? No really. Uh, Email, some diplomas have categories in common, but then you will see that other things are different. Like if you are applying to animation games and visual effects, they want to see the observational drawings, yes, but they also want to see some 3D. And you can use Blender, which is a, a free software for your computer. If you're using your iPad, you can try and download Shaper 3D and ask for an educational license because you have a student email. So, uh, and you can uh, do simple models of something. The other reason why you should try to do that is because if you join animation games and visual effects, it's mostly a 3D course. You need to figure out if you like 3D. Can the portfolio be submitted as a PowerPoint, Kino, Google Slide, Canva? Yes, like I said, you can use multiple platform. The only platform that we do not recommend you use is social media, Instagram, Twitter, don't use Twitter, don't use Tumblr because it's not static, um, don't use Facebook, but you're not on Facebook. You can use Vimeo if you have videos, uh, you can use YouTube, but you should embed them in your uh, website. So because you will see the video, for instance, is only part of the requirements. You will have, you need to have at least three different categories inside, all right? So let's say you have observation, 3D and video, then you embed the video in the same portfolio with everybody, with everything else. That brings me to the next question, which is how do we include videos in our portfolio? There is an embed code that is given to you by, by most uh, video hosting website. It's the one with the little brackets that look like this, right? Normally you copy and paste that in the HTML or whatever uh, you're using for, um, for your website. I know that some students have used in the past uh, Site123 and Card. 
those uh, fixed templates they're not very easy to modify and you know when i ask you to modify in review i always feel the pain on the other side so i will probably use something more like our station or canva or other things like that huh uh, yes would you guys choose people with higher score over this with lower scores to accept during the eae so like if one gets 12 and has a portfolio and another has 18 and there's uh, one as well will the 12 get chosen instead no it's not score based it's not result based you you only need to meet the minimum entry requirements so you could score two and have a really bad portfolio and you could score 24 and have an outstanding portfolio which sometimes is very likely to happen because instead of studying you're doing your own thing like i'm creating my own little video games can i host it on this website and show it to you yes please uh, then we just really look at your portfolio, your test, and how are you doing the interview. Not results. <laughs> Which is a good thing, because this exercise is really for you guys, huh? Who struggle in school, uh, because it's like one fit, one measure school, right? But we are all different people. To be honest, I was also terrible in math. Terrible in math. I have to be honest with you. But when I went to uni, you know, I will stop on my course. What if I am 0.2.1 GPA short? Am I still allowed to apply for EA? <laughs> you can try. I cannot promise anything though. Um, unfortunately, these minimum entry requirements are not set by us. I would say try and then keep your finger crossed. And I will keep my finger crossed for you too. Okay? Can I include work in my portfolio from primary school? That's all. You mean to say that since primary school you have not been doing anything? Is this really the course for you then? I mean, this course is really about passion, aptitude and attitude. So passion is, I like this. But the aptitude is, I like this so much I cannot stop doing it. And then your attitude is, I like this so much I cannot stop doing this. You know, it's how you do it, okay? So in general, if you don't have anything, I will give you homework if you join this course. And we start very early. You know, our portfolio uh, preparation workshop start as early as December, January. So, so why not get started a little early? Um, you bring whatever you have, you go through a consultation with a the lecturer, then the lecturer might tell you, oh, you need more of this, you need more of that. Then you go like, yeah. and join this course. And then you go like, oh, Miss Data, Mr. Terrence. Or, you know, Mr. Sean told me I need to have more of this. Okay, look. These are the software that you can use. These are some tutorials. Try and show them to us here. And we'll give you some feedback on how to improve on it. You need six to ten pieces. You don't need that many. But if you have six good ones, right? It's those six. It's those six that really matter. Trust me. What happens if you don't have anything to show for your talents and achievement? Like you never enter a competition or activities relating of the course. Oh, I think this one is about the 10,000 character uh, write-up. Okay, there must be something else that you've been doing with your life. I mean, maybe you learn Korean by yourself. That's a tough language to learn. Maybe you cook. Um, maybe you did some volunteering. Uh, or you participated in Chingi Parade. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe you... Uh, won a few races during sport day. Um, I think that anything that tells us what kind of person you are will be enough. Some of you are very musical. Why not say that? Well, we like all-rounded artists, artists. Do we need to pick all three choices in NYP because I would like to apply to one course in another poly? Sure, you can put another course in another poly. Uh, you need to do your homework. Figure out what makes us different from the other course. You can, uh, but you should put us first. Because we are the ones that have the strongest connection with the industry. For Especially for the Digital Media Diploma, we are the pioneers in Singapore. We are quite known in the industry and um, I think you should know that. And you also need to see what the students do. So compare the portfolio and, um, and also 
take a tour of our facilities. If you cannot come down to see us, uh, just uh, watch the 360 tour video that I recorded for you guys last year so you get to see all of our amazing labs they are really cool they are so cool that sometimes industry come and rent them for us okay just saying flexing here flexing Miss Data you see alright what I'm finished WIP's uh, project into our portfolio alright to be honest you have to try to put your best foot forward and so you should have the most finished thing that you have available to you. Nevertheless, if you put like in the same page, this is my final piece, and then you put your thought process, your work in progress, this is the sketch, value study, color study, final piece, this is my research and development, what I use as a reference. We love to see that. We love to see that because it tells us, hmm, this kid really thinks, I like, I like this. Uh, it's really, really important that you're not just a hamster with a pencil, you know, your nudo, the gear in your brain is like, ding, 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 like that. Uh, because you will be doing a lot of things independently in our courses. We give you briefs and it's all like, go, you figure it out. All right. The mindset from secondary school to poly is very different. We give a problem, the solution must come from you. This makes it really, really fun because you suddenly you are realize that you are so smart and you're like, I can do this. I cannot believe it. So it's quite a boost in self-esteem. Can I use photos I have taken during my photography CCA in my portfolio? Can. Can I include part of my comic book that I make for my portfolio? Can. If it's part of the portfolio requirements, why not? Can I put my character design process? Of course. Okay, now this is one important thing. We don't want to see a portfolio that is all character design. One is enough. It's just one that says, this is how I draw character design. Okay, we, we, we need to see variety. Alright, because you cannot be one trick pony. Depending which diploma you go to, character design is not our focus. Because character design is one of those jobs that you land after you work like 10 years in a company. Okay, it's a senior position. It's a very advanced senior position. Okay, we do teach you visual development, of course, but it's not the focus of the course, all right? In fact, what, what is the focus of the course, huh? It's all of these new technologies that are coming. All these immersive technology and experiences, okay? Especially for animation games and visual effects, you will see a lot of that because there's a huge demand for it. If I'm applying for next year, do I start doing my portfolio this year or next year? Why not start now? Why not start early? It's always good to start early. The early bird catch the worm. For IT EA application, does my final GPA include my CCA point? Everything is net aggregate. So even for all level students, uh, for minimum entry requirement, it's net aggregate. Uh, so CCA point, yes, included. Will they penalize me if I don't have many realistic drawings? You're not penalized per se, but I will practice. Because if it's one of the requirements, chances are it will be in the test. I'm not saying it's in the test. I'm saying the requirements are there for a reason. Okay? Huh? Okay. If I didn't receive any email, does that mean that I did not qualify? Okay, let's talk about this. If you don't go through the first stage of application, or if you don't pass the test, uh, or if you don't pass the interview, you will not be communicated. It's quite savage the way it's done, but you have to understand that if we have like 1,300 applicants, for instance, it's very hard to email them back and say sorry you did not make it though i did highlight that it would be nice to have an automated system to inform i'm not sure whether or not it will be implemented this year or next year because it takes some work to build something like that from scratch and i did notify that um, i mean the anxiety level of not receiving anything it's uh, it's quite high and we shouldn't do this, but like I said, um, it's a bit complicated. We will try to do better by you uh, as soon as possible. 
I don't know if by next year we can do it. But otherwise, the answer is... Sorry, if you're not selected, we are, we are going to ghost you. It's, it's, a, it's a bad relationship. It's a bad romance. Alright. Um, there is a really, really... I, even, I, even if I know, I cannot tell you. Uh, it's, it's just silence across the board. So, all I can do is keep my finger crossed for you. Actually, no, I can do more than that. I can help you build a good portfolio. Because uh, last year, thanks to the portfolio review, the success rate of the Discordians was 55%. Whereby, those of you who never joined Discord, their success rate was only about 29%. So, there's a little 20% that makes a difference, huh? uh, and, and you should join Discord. If I've been shortlisted for an interview, what must I prepare to answer them? My, what might they ask? So, of course, you prepare yourself. One of the things that I always recommend the students doing is, you know, go in with a clear mind. You know what your portfolio looks like. Uh, by then, you will know your portfolio by heart because you will have worked on it for so, so long. So, one of the things that you want to do is take over the conversation. Go, hello, lecturer. My name is so-and-so. This is my portfolio. May I share with you? And then you start describing what's in your portfolio. Now, one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to be too long-winded. Be concise in your descriptions. So these are my observational drawing. I went outdoor and sketched people on the MRT. I used pencil and, and uh, pen. Uh, then I decided I should try and draw my room. So I drew a, a view of my room. I'm still trying to figure out the perspective, but I kind of like how this drawing came out. So you kind of go like that. The lecturer eventually will ask you a few questions. Some of them will be if you participate in any of our activities, if you join our open house, which you should because it's a really big event and it's really, really cool. If you came to visit our facilities or if you attended any of our workshops. And of course, they will expect you to have a certain level of knowledge about the industry you want to join. Because if you are in this course, you want to join a certain industry. You should know what you're getting yourself into, right? Would you marry somebody blindly and you don't even know their genetic background? What, they have very defective genes, then you're going to have children with three eyes. Okay, so make sure that you really know what you're getting yourself into. Do a proper research on what the local industry is like so that you are prepared if those questions come. Is he a must who have taken art as an exam in my levels? No. Uh, to be honest, like uh, the subjects are in the JAE booklet, so you can pick any subject that, that you like. Uh, in fact, there are two of our courses, GDT and Architecture, that don't even have art in the best two subjects, okay? They have science in there. Uh, so, of course, uh, the other diplomas are more like art, art, art and design oriented. Um, you could have DNT, for instance, and, and things like that. But again, check the JAE booklet. Does the six pieces for my portfolio need to be in six different media? So when we mention variety, it's not just the media, it's the subjects. And it follows the requirements. So you could have traditional drawing, digital, you could have 3D modeling, you could have photography, you could have videography, you could have some motion graphics already, uh, you could have your DNT sculpture. So uh, it's not about the media, it's about um, even if you do three observational drawings and that's the foundation of your portfolio should be like three different subjects for instance uh not just humans if your portfolio is all humans we are why can you do something else okay like i said variety you don't want to be a one trick do i have to give three choices can i just give two you can even put just one but may i suggest something because we have an, a common entry program, which is called a uh, common media and design program. As I previously mentioned, some of the diplomas are very, very popular. Like a lot of people want to go to animation games and visual effects and stuff. And um, so uh, why not look at the other courses as well? Um, I can guarantee you that, for instance, if you like to draw communication and motion design, it's, um, it's an excellent choice, uh, but you know, there's also this third option, which is, you know, the common design and media program. Now, how does this one work? It's a, it's just a one semester. 
It's one semester, I talk about it in the uh, school of review, where you get to take the same modules as the other diplomas, but whereby the diplomas focus on the discipline. This one will give you a taster of all the other diplomas. Uh, and then by the end of the semester, you figure out if you want to go to your original choice, or maybe along the way you figure out, you know what? I think I'm gonna be better off doing that. Yeah. Also, if you put one choice and that one choice eh, reject you, like, eh, cannot go anywhere. How? If I manage to get into the EAE, but I change my mind and want to go to another diploma using O level results instead. Okay, so this is a little complicated. Um, if. If you have received an offer and have accepted the offer, when the F20 form comes to you, it will say that you are no, long, no, no longer eligible to apply to JAE. So you cannot use your results to apply to another diploma. The truth is you cannot apply to JAE anymore. Your F20 form will be empty because you accepted the offer. So this is the one thing I would like to tell you all because I also have another question asking if they can withdraw and go to uni instead. Alright. If you're not 100% sure, don't apply. There will be people out there that will want this more than you. And then you are taking people's time. You're taking, you know, uh, you're taking someone else's spot too if you are 100 sure if this is what you want you apply but if you're not 100 sure and you're just feeling something as a backup plan just in case uh, it doesn't seem fair to me but that is my personal opinion i think that you should figure out what you want before you go ahead and apply you should really figure out what you want um it's, it's very very important because if you join and then you don't like, you're like stuck three years doing something that you don't like. And that happened to me when I was in high school. I was enrolled in a high school that wasn't my first choice. It was my parents' choice and it was five years of prison. Every morning going there thinking, what did I do wrong in my previous life? And I had to endure that for five years. I mean, in the end, I even graduated top of the school. But, boy, I hated it. <laughs> All right. So, do your homework. Look around. Really do look around. Look at all the possibilities. And if you see something that you truly like and something that you really want, just focus on that until you get it. I think it will be better. Are anime style drawing okay in the animation portfolio? I'll be honest with you. Um... If they can be turned into 3D for games, yes. If you want to do animation, we don't do a lot of anime. Uh, but even as a style, uh, you can draw in your own style. But we'll teach you realistic. And we'll teach you a lot of different styles for character design. Uh, because character design for animation is different from character design from game. In fact, it's called visual development. You can put it in your portfolio, but don't put a lot of it. Like... Uh, if you all have the same kind of drawings, then I can go any mini, mini, more and just pick the one. Then, oh, this one got two 3D model inside. I'll pick this one. So, how do you stand out if you all draw the same stuff? All right, you gotta find a way to stand out. Can we include short write ups about our own experience related to the course, like workshops and competition? I'm not sure if you're meaning the portfolio itself or the write up. In the write up, yes, you put it. Uh, this is one other thing that I can tell you. Um, I know that sometimes they ask you for certificates and letters. Uh, not all diploma will look to them. Uh, but you can create a separate section in your portfolio where you upload them. And, uh, you know, just in case during interview, uh, as you talk, you can say, Oh, yes, I participated in this uh, competition. See, I got cert. Sure, got cert. See, this one, ah, huh? can, ah. Huh? And then the teacher goes, Oh, okay, sure, sure. All right. Though they might be looking more at your artwork, to be honest. For game development and technology, is it a prerequisite to be able to draw well to present idea concept on storyboard? No. Uh, in fact, they do very little design. They do a tiny bit. 
but uh, they, they are programmers. Uh, that's why both architecture and game development, you know, are slightly different from the rest of the diplomas. They're more, uh, a bit more technical. Uh, though architecture, eventually, they get to do technical drawings for, for, for buildings, right? Uh, but uh, game development, they do a little bit of design so that they can create their own little uh, sprites and stuff or their, 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 um, their units, huh? the study units, uh, the, the ones that they do at the end of the semester because um, uh, all, all diplomas will do that instead of exam. How can I tailor my write up for each different diploma? Like if I want, if the courses are similar, like I said, you do your homework, you go and research and see how they're different. Now, if you copy and paste, just so you know, we see all of the write-up. So if we see the same write-up for all of the diplomas, or even for the same diploma but in another school, you will not look good on you. Huh? You will look a little like, huh, this person cannot even figure out what's the difference between this and that. You, you kind of like make us feel not special. And we are special, we want to feel special, we want to feel like you love us and that's why you want to join us. And there are many reasons why you should love us and you should, should join us. It's not just the school itself, but it's like if you come and visit us during major events, you will see how, how cool our students are. And if you, you know, follow our Instagrams, you can see uh, how many cool things our students do, how many events they have every year. And, and it's a very fun environment to be. And of course, our facilities look amazing, amazing. If I don't have a computer, how do I do 3D things? Clay, you can do a little sculpture. Uh, of course, uh, uh, some some diplomas I have in their uh, categories, um, d and and sculpture. So, and I've seen a few beautiful ceramic pieces being submitted. I've seen a student submitting origami for communication and motion design. And it was a mind-blowing type of origami. We've never seen anything like that. Uh, we really love this origami uh, when you show it to us. There is a possibility of downloading certain apps on your phone. Uh, so sometimes when you guys tell me I don't have a computer, I just want to let you know that the phone that I hold in my hand is about 56 times more powerful than the computer I owned when I was in university doing 3D animation in my school. <laughs> Okay, so uh, if you look around, you will find there are apps. They might not be cheap, cheap, but some of them have educational licenses that you can ask. So I would just really try to be resourceful about it. Some people find solutions and some people find excuses. We tend to go for people who find solutions. I have to be honest. What if the interviewer asked me about my future plan related to the course, but I still don't know? Will they mark me down? Just wing it. <laughs> okay, joke aside, you may not know in the specific, like you might not know, like you might not be the kind of person, I want to work for Disney. Not everybody's like that. But be honest. You just say, Look, I haven't planned that far yet. I got this idea that this school will change my mind about my mind about so many things. All I know is that I'm really interested in this. I want to try. I want to try and see where it takes me. And by the time I reach year three, I will figure it out. I'm sure I will figure it out. Actually, we do have a lot of ECG modules for you guys, huh? so it's like uh, career guidance and stuff. And you meet with your personal mentor a lot and uh, this person will be able to see, oh, you're actually quite good in this subject. Do you want to focus more on this area rather than in this other area? So uh, you're not left to your own devices. Huh? Actually, we follow you very closely. We highlight the ta your talents. Even the lecture is not your personal mentor, we'll highlight your talent to to your personal mentor and your course coordinator so that you can enter competition like the rookies and other things like that you know and they say hey do you know anybody that can do this thing and i was like oh i know just the student so it's quite okay to say that you have not figured it out yet but that you are confident that you will be figuring out by the end of year three because you are sure to be exposed to big variety of subjects i'm feeding you the answer here should you pay me for this no okay uh, all I'm saying is just be honest. Be honest and say, I, I don't think I've planned it that far yet. Uh, so 
but do research on the industry. I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen that. I think I like this and that. I'm not sure yet though. So I would like to try and create this stuff for myself. And then I will know. Yes, I'm cut for this or no, I'm going to be a lawyer. <laughs> it happens. Change your mind. Huh? You don't have to figure everything out right now. huh? You don't have to figure everything out right now when you're only not even 20. You will do a lot of figuring out in life. Can I create character based on an existing games? Ah, fun art. Let's talk about fun art. What fun art do is they just tell you you're a draftman. The design does not belong to you. The IP does not belong to you. So it does not tell us a lot about your creative mind. If you have original characters, it will be much better because I will see or we will see your design abilities. Oh, this person has created this crazy looking character that it's half potato, half dinosaur. I love it. Uh, rather than see, oh, it's a fan art of Genshin. Oh, it's another fan art of Genshin. Oh, it's yet another fan art of Genshin. We see a lot of fan art of Genshin. So if you all start looking the same, then the dinosaur potato will stand out. Do most candidates pass the aptitude test? No. No. To be honest, no. Uh, it's quite it's quite the carnage. <laughs> so prepare for it in a way. Not just mentally, but you know. Practice based on the requirements. If this stuff you have it in your portfolio, you should be able to do it in the test. Are testimonial compulsory? Not really. Not really. I know that sometimes teachers don't um, don't manage to write testimonials for you guys on time. Testimonials and shirts are just an extra thing. Uh, some courses don't even look at them. They're just like, oh, look at the cool game this kid created. You know, like that. We're very geeky people. It's good to have. It's not a must have. You know, in life, we have categories of things which are must have, good to have should have something like that but it's not a must have it's it's good to have huh but not necessarily compulsory what if you have the creative ideas but your drawings is not the best like it's average will affect my portfolio depending on the on the diploma it might some some diploma look at variety in general but then you should practice your observational drawings it's not so much about the idea and stuff. It really is about do you understand what you see kind of thing. What if I am too shy to speak during the interview? Rehearse with a friend. Rehearse with a friend and rehearse with family. Uh, try to practice what you want to say. Our lectures are actually very nice. Uh, some of them are really cute people. Like not physically cute, they're really cute emotionally. Um, they're not really that scary, so um, and if they see that you are nervous, they'll try their best to put you at ease, so do not worry about it. Okay, some people want to put all levels artwork in portfolio. We've seen those before. The issue is your portfolio is online. Then we see portfolio with passcode and stuff and we can't do that. There is a little bit of an issue there, whereby one of the things that you can do is you have to find a way to hide it somewhere uh, so that uh, it's it's not visible in the first page. And the second thing is don't uh, don't don't make your portfolio searchable. So like if you use Google Slides, for instance, nobody except the person with the link will access it. So if you want to use um, your level artworks, it's okay to share with us. We are under non-disclosure agreement, so we know that this thing cannot be disclosed publicly. Uh, but the thing is, I will use something like uh, Google Slides or Canva. And then when you share the link with us, it's set to only the people with the link can view. Like that, you're protected. There you go. I have one more question that has to do with the special direct admission exercise. Now. The special direct admission exercise function very similarly to the early admission exercise is via portfolio. So again, you can join Discord and we can help you prepare for it. And you can attend some of our workshops. It takes place usually between January and April. But the thing is this one, because if you ask me about 
requirements for this. It's a bit complicated to explain because there are so many different categories of people that can apply. So normally, uh, because the special direct admission exercise takes place last, it's usually allocated for international students, SPM, UEC holder, uh, IBS holder, so there's other qualification. And then uh, there are other things like right? for even O-levels, A-levels, even IT students can apply. Okay, they can apply. So my recommendation is, if you want to know if you're eligible, please go to the NYP website. Go Google NYP DAE and it will pop up right there. It's the first thing that pops up. And go and read about the requirements, all right? Because, you know, there are so many different categories of people that can apply through this exercise. It really is a special direct admission exercise. It's for all those people who cannot use the previous exercises because they're not O-level students or because they're not IT students. And it is also for those of you who forgot, oh, sure, I forgot to apply, huh? <laughs> okay. Don't like that though, huh? Don't last minute wake up. I need to apply to this thing. Huh? It happened to me uh, a couple of times. I was like midnight when it was closing as the age. I'm applying. I'm more like, oh, okay. Uh, so it's a little scary and painful. So go and Google NYP SDAE. Look at all the requirements uh, based on who you are. Okay, so this is a very long list. You can see it on the website and uh, check the requirements there. If you have any more questions uh, that I may have not answered in this session, please join our Discord servers. Uh, server, just one. Uh, and use Ask a Reach. It's this one, this, this one specific channel is called Ask a Reach, where you can ask me and my ambassador questions and we will take them and, and then we'll either guide you to the website, the specific link that you need, or other channels they may have the answers for you. We also have a lot of pin posts with a lot of information. So before you ask the question, check the pin posts and figure out, oh, this was covered already. Uh, because if we get the same question over and over and over and over again, uh, then all we can do is we tell you, please check the pin posts. Uh. Don't uh, take it the wrong way. But you know, there's many, many of you joining. We really do want to help you. We do manage to help you, right? We really do make a difference. Okay. Uh, just be proactive though. Be very, very proactive. That's very, very important because that's the kind of trait that we're looking for the most when we select our students. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in to this session. I hope uh, it helped and uh, see you next time. Bye.